Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Leadership in the Post-High-Tech Era. In this lecture, we'll look at the original goals of the High-Tech Act, the progress and changes we've made so far, and some of the implications for leaders who must manage the change. The objectives for this unit, Leadership in the Post-High-Tech Era, are to summarize the goals of the High-Tech Act, summarize progress and changes in the health IT landscape since inception of high-tech, outline the challenges of managing teams, technology, and expectations in the post-high-tech era, and describe how leaders who manage teams in healthcare organizations should think about new ways of managing teams, technology, and expectations in the post-high-tech era. As a review, President Obama signed the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health High-Tech Act as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARA, of 2009. The Office of the National Coordinator, or the ONC, executed what was established in this act. Among other things, the act was designed to incentivize the healthcare industry and healthcare providers to adopt electronic health records, or EHRs. But using EHRs was not the end goal of the HITECH Act. The overriding goal was to use health IT and EHRs to enable better health care quality, greater affordability, and improved health care outcomes for all Americans. Two sets of programs were designed to enable these improvements. The EHR Incentive Program set interoperability standards for EHRs. The Incentive Program was designed to increase interoperability, or how EHRs can talk to one another. Further, Medicaid and Medicare provided payments to providers and organizations who implemented EHRs and reported on specific quality measures to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. The use of the EHR to improve quality and the fulfillment of specific requirements in that regard is what is referred to as meaningful use of EHRs. Several ONC programs were created under the High Tech Act. The regional extension centers were created to help organizations and providers find their way around the EHR adoption process all the way from vendor selection to workflow analysis to implementation and meaningful use. The state HIE Cooperative Agreement Program provided funding to individual states so that they could find new ways to safely and efficiently exchange health information both within and across states. In all, 56 different HIEs were formed. The SHARP program supported research into well-documented problems with adoption of EHRs. The outcomes of the research studies were meant to accelerate progress toward the meaningful use of health IT. The Beacon Community Program was designed to highlight organizations that use health IT to advance the vision of patient-centered care. The Beacon Community Programs spanned across 17 organizations that demonstrated the three-part aim of better health, better care, and lower cost. As you can see here, there were a number of other programs that supported the goals of the High Tech Act, which focused on developing and supporting a workforce that could support the increased adoption of technology in a healthcare setting. While other ONC programs focused on systems that demonstrate meaningful use, the idea of this program was to train the people who would be able to help providers implement EHRs. As of December 2015, 90% of hospitals that were eligible for the Medicare and Medicaid EHR incentive programs achieved meaningful use of certified health IT. According to the CMS EHR Incentive Program data, more than 90% of large, medium, small rural, and critical access hospitals were meaningfully using certified health IT, and more than four in five small urban hospitals were meaningfully using certified technology. Children's hospitals have the lowest rate of meaningful use achievement, 
with over two and three children's hospitals having achieved meaningful use. Among eligible providers, the percentages of office-based physicians that have demonstrated meaningful use range from zero to 100 percent, which is quite a range. Minnesota had the most providers who demonstrated meaningful use at 82 percent, while Alaska had the fewest at 20 percent. The important item to note in this map is that every state in the union had eligible providers who demonstrated meaningful use. This represents a significant change for office-based physicians, many of whom switched from paper-based records to electronic health records. And what became of the other proposed programs? Regional Extension Centers, or RECs, now help more than 100,000 providers to implement EHRs and receive the Meaningful Use Incentives. The ONC Workforce Programs trained 21,437 students and administered nearly 10,000 competency-based exams. And 17 Beacon communities compiled their Lessons Learned to develop six learning guides that provide proven strategies and actionable information other communities can adopt. Across the state health information exchanges, we saw significant progress in how we exchange health information about our patients. According to the 2014 Report to Congress on Health IT Adoption and HIEs, we know that 69% of physicians can now order lab tests electronically, and 77% can view lab results electronically. 42% of physicians can now let their patients view online, download, or transmit information from their medical record. And 57% of new and renewal prescriptions in 2013 were sent electronically. The number of state and local health departments receiving electronic laboratory reports from laboratories has more than doubled since 2005. Hospitals are exchanging data at a greatly increased rate because of the implementation of HIEs across states. Half of hospitals reported that providers can query patient information from sources outside of their own system. The High Tech Sharp grant at the University of Texas, Houston, developed tools for usability evaluation. Their user-centered guidance for developers provided examples of how complex tasks like medication reconciliation could be made easier and more accurate in new systems. As we heard from some of the previous examples, the High Tech Act allowed health IT adoption at an unprecedented rate and also introduced new and innovative approaches to health IT. With the increase in adoption of IT, a lot of structured data is now being generated that will help tell us more about our patients and our organizations. The path to interoperability has been widened, and our systems talk to each other much more than they have in the past. Motivations for continuing to move forward are much higher than we've seen in the past. With more EHRs generating more data, the U.S. healthcare delivery system is in a position to respond to concerns about how providers and organizations deliver patient care and how they are paid for that care. The new models of healthcare delivery focus not on volume of procedures performed or patients treated, but on the quality of the procedures that were performed. Two models, accountable care organizations or ACOs and patient-centered medical homes, are built on the foundation of health IT to support their execution. Prior to being able to generate electronic data about our patients, these new models of care were simply not possible. Some of the new opportunities presented by high tech include being able to analyze data to find out how one practice is performing in comparison to another one, or how the procedures organizations provide vary by provider or location. Likewise, we are able to see comparisons between quality of outcomes for different subsets of our patient population. 
These patterns can be analyzed across locations. All of the recent and significant change we have seen requires that leaders manage new relationships, new partnerships, and new technologies. On the next few slides, we'll take a look at each of these in a little more detail. Earlier, we talked about new models of care, like accountable care organizations, being enabled by a more robust IT environment. The introduction of new reimbursement models naturally introduces new roles that had not previously existed in the organization. For instance, new ACOs typically hire individuals called ACO coordinators to coordinate care across different settings. Likewise, individual practices participating in an ACO may each name or hire individuals called practice transformation specialists who are responsible for implementing the ACO changes within an individual practice. At a higher level, an organization may hire an ACO director who may ultimately be responsible for attaining the goals of the ACO. With the introduction of health information exchanges, we have seen new positions such as HIE coordinator or HIE liaison. These individuals may serve as representatives to a state or vendor-sponsored HIE. Each of these new positions means that there is a new relationship that now needs to be considered in the daily organizational decision-making. For instance, a practice transformation specialist may be required to collect certain data points on patients in that practice and report them to CMS. An ACO coordinator may have a need to collect and report on data from across several organizations. The need for these data have implications for the organization's use of health IT because it means more demand for services and careful coordination and communication. It will be very important that health IT leadership understands the goals of the ACO and is involved in the decision-making at an organizational level to ensure that they can manage the demand and resources required. The changed healthcare environment now means that we exchange data electronically, not only within our organizations, but with individuals outside of our organization. Until the rapid EHR adoption under the High Tech Act, we knew details about our own patients, such as how many of our patients are diabetic, average age of our patients with diabetes, and how long they have had the disease. Now, with ACOs, we may be responsible for knowing these same numbers across multiple hospitals, across multiple states or regions. This means we will need to develop, nurture, and maintain a partnership with individuals we may never even have talked to before. Likewise, with patient-centered medical homes, we are no longer charged with simply managing care of our own patients while they're in our care. In the newer patient-centered model, we must now consider the care that patients receive both before and after we see them. It means that we must define and build ways to communicate with new providers electronically and share relevant data with them because we are all collectively responsible for managing that patient's care. We also share in the risk of not managing the care appropriately. Again, IT leadership must understand the organizational opportunities and risks that these new external partnerships present. Ideally, they should even be involved in the formation of the new partnerships. Finally, the rapid introduction of technology requires that leadership maintain a strong focus on the risk that the technology can also bring to the organization. With more and more EHR vendors moving to cloud-based technology, we have to consider new ways to account for the security and privacy of those data. We must have technical safeguards in place that alert us immediately when a problem exists. New and significant risks like denial of service attacks could suspend clinical and administrative operations for days and land the organization and its leadership in very hot water with the public. New technologies enable organizations to innovate, and this is exciting. But IT leadership is responsible for ensuring that opportunity is balanced with risk management 
and mitigation strategies. The introduction and adoption of technology that we saw under the High Tech Act is just the beginning. New technologies will continue to be introduced every year, and the IT department will have to manage them. IT leaders must begin to think about how technology can enable precision medicine so that our patients' genetic considerations and treatment decisions can be managed at a personal level. This will mean the introduction of very specific and very complex technology into healthcare organizations. There are populations of patients now in our systems that have never known the world without the Internet or social media who expect all technology to work for them immediately, 100% of the time, and with no training. These individuals see themselves less as patients and more as consumers of services. We must learn to develop technological interventions that meet their needs and their mindsets. We must also learn to design technologies to help us keep our patients well, not only treat them when they're sick. This will require that patient-facing technologies of the future be designed to influence behavior change, such as walking more, logging food entries, and capturing data from wearable devices. And we need to show patients their data in meaningful ways. In this new environment, with changing laws, technologies, and patient expectations, IT leadership needs to stay one step ahead to monitor legislation, study it, and share the implications with others in the organization. To do this, it is very important that IT leadership be actively involved in organizational decision-making and nurture the relationships between and among IT and the clinical, business, and financial stakeholders. This concludes Leadership in the Post-High-Tech Era. To summarize, the High Tech Act changed the healthcare IT landscape and enabled many opportunities. High Tech also paved the way for even more technological breakthroughs that will increase the complexity of our environments. Leaders must learn to manage in new ways that will enable them to take advantage of the opportunities and changes.